All right, guys, God bless you, and welcome. This is it, 4321 Before the Fire. Christ's purpose, his purpose, was to make one new man to transform you by the renewing of your mind, to make one new man from the two, the, the transformation of you by the renewing of your mind, by the restoration of your sight. Every time in the Bible it says renewing of your mind, it's anakianosis. It means to make up new again. When it says the restoration of your sight, it's anablepsis. Ana is up, blepsis is sight. Your sight is restored up. The Bible says if your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. Because light is up, dark is down. So if your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. I showed you it means uh, full, to open the dungeons of the prisoners means to fold together your, like folding together your eyes to become single. I'll show it to you again. I kind of butchered it a little bit right there. I have it all in the folders for you though. It's always up. When the Son of Man is lifted up, you'll know that I am He. Okay, I'm going to show you some stuff today. I, I, I made a, a very uh, easy to understand uh, magnetic um, example to show you guys what it looks like. The Bible says unless you're converted you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Converted means turned quite around, turn the opposite direction. So we have two energies in opposition. They are against each other with inside you. Inside you and that's the war that's raging. Um, and I'm going to show you the way the Lord showed me to explain it to you. Um, I have some glasses on here, and on these glasses, representing our eyes, we have one eye that goes down to the pit, and I have this blue line that goes from one eye and one eye that goes to heaven, and that is the connection of our consciousness, and the two have been joined together. That's what Genesis 3 was, the joining together, and the result was a cannibalistic system. It, the system is murderous. Cannibalistic gets the forbidden fruit. Okay, so I'm going to show you all these things, but first I, I need to do something. Um, last night I, I did a 30 second video and I was in here and just, I felt this heaviness. And I was just like, Lord, is that you? And it was about Karen Sullivan. Um, and I want to pray for Karen Sullivan that she's okay. Um, I, I'm just going to play this little video from last night. It's very odd. Uh, but... Uh, I'm going to play the video. I'm going to play you a couple little video clips. I'm, first, I'm going to play you a video clip from The Chosen. I think it's really good. Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene. So it shows Mary's walk uh, with Jesus. And I, I like it because there's there's a part where Nicodemus is following Mary, and he thinks that he had laid hands on her and cast out the demons. But it was Jesus that actually did it. And it's an interesting scene, uh, and I like the way she tells him, well, I was one way, and then I became complete something completely different, and what happened in between was him. And so I just want to show you that clip, and then if you'll bear with me just for like one minute, a little over a minute, um, I put this together this back when I got saved. Before I came out publicly on YouTube or any media platforms, um, I had done my personal testimony and I wrote time to testify. And if you read that, it says the time will come when you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about. The sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place. Anyway, and that's what I'm, I've been bearing witness to that as my entire um, reason for being bearing witness to the destruction of the temple. But in that, I wrote something that I would like to share with you because just like Mary, Mary became something completely different. And what happened in between was him, and that's what happened to me. And uh, so right here, I'm gonna just show you very quickly. It says, before we begin, and I was letting people know, I. Uh, to get right with God, it's it's good to get any unconfessed sin out of the way. And then I, I'm going to go up. It says, Confession of Conscience. Uh, this letter is as much a confession as, as it is a testimony. 
I'm I'm just gonna let I let a a guy read it that had just a different accent, just because I didn't want to hear my own voice to be honest, and uh, and uh, some of the words, uh, because I let a guy read it with the South African accent, and some of the words to me I just like the way it sounds. Anyway, so just being honest, so I'm gonna let him read that to you. And then I'm going to play a 30 second video from last night when I was doing a video out here. I just felt this big heaviness, like something not good had happened to uh, either Karen Sullivan or maybe someone in the family or something. I just want to pray for them. I want everyone to join with me in prayer. Okay. All right. So let's do this first. Y'all ready? Okay. First of all, I love you in Christ. Peace and grace. I don't want there to be a heaviness or a sorrow. Uh, I love you guys. I can't wait to share with you what the Lord showed me and how to present it. And then I'm going to take you for those of y'all that think that, oh, if you went and you got if you've been converted, I want to show you what the Bible says. If you've been converted, there's people that think that after you get converted, you'll never, ever sin again. I'm like, what? <laughs> they misunderstood some stuff. Um, remember King David, who was a man after God's own heart? Yeah, he uh, he was God's anointed. Jesus was from the line of David. And uh, David, who I'm speaking about, that slew Goliath, well, he stepped off the curb into stupidity when he went and had Bathsheba brought over to the palace and he slept with a married man's wife. And he tried to bring the married man home from the battlefront. So he would sleep with his wife, hoping that that would cover up the fact that he had impregnated some other guy's wife. And then that didn't work. So he sends him back to the battlefront sends a little note with him and says, hey, when he's when the battle gets heated, just have the guys withdraw from him and lets him get killed in battle. That's murder. Uh, then so and then he's like, hey, I'm going to be a great guy and take on his wife and cover up the whole kid thing. Then Nathan shows up and tells him, hey, you know, the Lord let me know you're the guy. And so anyway, so David was in pretty big trouble, but he confessed his sin. Blessed be the Lord, and the Lord said your child with Bathsheba is going to die. You're going to have a dysfunctional family now. Absalom tried to take over, you know, half-brother raping his, uh, his sister. All, all the bad stuff happened. David was on the run. So anyway, there's still the consequence, in, the consequence engine will continue to turn if you do something. But it doesn't mean that God throws you away. And I want to show you in the scriptures. I want to show you in the scriptures what the Lord showed me, and I just want you to have it. And I'm going to give you these super cool examples so you'll get it in your brain. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's go back and let's watch this one clip. This is a great clip. Uh, if you don't mind just watching uh, Nicodemus stalk, uh, stalk Mary for a while. Now, here's the thing. He calls her Lilith, which I, I find fascinating because in the series, uh, Mary, when she's all demonically possessed, uh, the people that know her call her Lilith. Well, that's interesting because Lilith was like considered Adam's original, uh, sex partner. You know, Lilith. Um, anyway. Okay. Here we go. You ready? So here's the setup. Nicodemus is stalking Mary Magdalene. Jesus has let, so, uh, he saw her in, in whatever the district she lives in. The Romans had called over. They needed a holy man because she was all the, uh, demonically possessed. So he thought he went in there, you know, with some uh, chain and smoke and saying, you know, some words from the Torah. And he thought maybe he was the reason she was well, because he heard about it later. So he went over to check it out. And so he sees her and he's stalking her through the marketplace because he can't believe his eyes. There's Mary Magdalene. And he had said the only person that, you know, people were saying the only person that could have healed her was God. Okay, so he's really interested, like, what happened? He's thinking, oh, I laid hands on her and I healed her. Little does he know that Jesus had come up to her after he had seen her, and she was getting ready to go into one of her bouts, and Jesus just took the cup of alcohol away and said, this is not for you. And then Jesus, uh, you know, lays hands on Mary and restores her. So anyway, uh, I've laid it out. Let's just get into the vibe, you know, watch this. Let's just get our hearts there and our brains there. And again, about the Chosen series. It's an excellent series. Please don't freak out. Oh, he's Catholic. Please don't do that. It means nothing. Jim Caviezel's Catholic. He played Jesus in the Passion of Christ. Doesn't matter. We're just watching it. And I'm not going for 100% accuracy and biblical interpretation at all. 
I'm just going for the kind of like, let's just get our brains back in the past, that kind of thing, okay? It's kind of cool. Here we go. Ready? It's you. It's real. Lilith. No, no, please, don't be frightened. My name is Nicodemus. I'm, I ministered to you, Lilith. I don't answer to that name. I am Mary. I was born Mary. But you were called Lilith, yes? Please, I must go. No, no, please, Mary. I, I am desperate for your help, Mary. I'm, I'm a Pharisee. I'm visiting from Jerusalem. I'm a man of God. And I believe you have experienced a miracle, Mary. Are you really a Pharisee? Yes. yes. I'm sorry, I wasn't... A, I'm not here to enforce Jewish law. So how do you know who I am? You really don't remember me at all. I burned incense. I don't remember. It's all a blur. I can't go back into that. No, no, I don't want you to. I can't even imagine. But you you are healed. That, that much is clear. I just want to understand how it happened. That makes two of us. <laughs> how long after my visit did you feel the change? It wasn't anything you did. <laughs> it was someone else. Some one else? really good that one of those really good movie moments where I'm like, what <laughs> here we go someone else yes it was someone else some one else <laughs> he called me Mary he said I am his I am redeemed. And it was so? Who did this? I don't know his name. And even if I did, I could not tell you. Why not? His time for men to know has not yet come. His time for men? He performs miracles and seeks no credit? Well, what does he look like? Is he a member of Sanhedrin? Would you at least know him if you saw him again? <laughs> I don't know why I am sharing this with you. I, I don't understand it myself. But here is what I can tell you. I was one way. And now I am completely different. And it, I don't understand it myself. But here is what I can tell you. I was one way. And now I am completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. So yes, I will know him for the rest of my life. <laughs> I have to be home to prepare for Shabbat. All right. So anyway, there we go. So I was one way. And then I was completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. Okay. These I'm going to take off because we're going to use these. This is a little bit of our, what we're going to use with our magnets to give you the model that the Lord showed me, it's so easy to understand when you understand the simplicity of the Bible. It's beyond our brains how simple it really is, but it's also beyond our brains how impossible it is. Okay, so again, hopefully you've seen the previous video where I showed you all the word Ana. Ana means up. The restoration of your sight is Ana Lepsis. Uh, to restore your sight is up restoration of your sight. That means your sight's been restored. Ana is up. And then 
Those that are spiritual discern all things. Ana Krino, Ana is up, and Krino means to decide judiciously. Ana Krino, to vigorously judge from down to up. Ana Krino, um, which is what happened to us. We got turned up. Um, our vision, we got turned up. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word renewing is Ana Kainosis. So, Ana Kainosis. So, Ana up restoration so up is restored because see when you come into the system your essence your spiritual essence as an angel gets turned down so you're in a system where there's one up and one down there's an eye that's up and there's an eye that's down so you're in a twin system just like Cain and Abel that's why their names are Cain and Abel Cain Cain and Abel Cainable the system is cannibalistic Cain is the eldest, and because he came out first, and so that's why the Bible says the elder shall serve the younger, because, and that's why Jacob is called the supplanter, because the second child to come out is the one that's pointing up. So Cain came out first, and then he's uh, so Cain comes out first, and he's the elder, and then Jacob, the supplanter, comes next, and we become the supplanters because we. We are the supplanters and we become Yisrael. I'm sorry. So Yaakov means supplant, to supplant, take over. And so we take over and become Yisrael. He will rule as El within us. Okay. Anyway, so here we go. Ready? I was one way and now I'm completely different. Now, if you would just bear with me, I want to just, this is something I wanted to just put out there. It's two minutes and 56 seconds. And this was done after I, I had received Christ and I was just like, uh, the understanding that I had was beyond my ability and I had to let go of some stuff in order to move on. Because when you become a Christian, if you get converted, the system knows you've been converted and the system's going to hate you. And I mean, I have been hated. There are channels out there that are devoted to hating Jonathan Clark. It's okay. They're supposed to be there. I pray for them. I actually truly pray for them. So anyway, so I'd like to play this because then I have a short little thing from last night. And I pray honestly that it's not true. Uh, that when I say that it's not true, when I show you the video, I want you to just watch the video and then we'll take it from there. So, okay, here we go. Sorry, guys. So here we go. Dear brothers and sisters, this letter is as much a confession as it is a testimony. It is a letter to God. O oh my Lord, my God, deal with my rebellious heart. Deal with me, Lord, at the foot of the cross and at the trail of blood and agony that beckons the heart and soul of each one of us that have been called to you. O oh merciful God, please deal with my rebellious heart. My rebellious heart saw others as the reason for failure. It blamed others for its own unhappiness. It accused others of what it itself was already guilty of. My rebellious heart lied to itself in any and every manner of justification. They it stood confidently at the end of a long tortuous walk, watching the one carrying the cross. My rebellious heart pointed its finger and accused the heavy burdened one. As Jesus was nailed to that cross and lifted up, my rebellious heart hurled insults and accusations and took self-righteous gratification in the illusionary justice of the condemned. And then out of perfect grace and perfect love. The miracle. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Jesus prays for forgiveness for the ones that are his enemies, especially me. He endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. His joy came from making us whole again through forgiveness. Oh, the joy. Oh, my Lord, my God, your perfect child looks with compassion at those that hate him and he offers to take their place. The joy was in the forgiveness. The miracle of all miracles happens. Those that have condemned themselves are redeemed. The one that was sinless becomes sin. The ones that were evil become sinless. The ones that were stained become spotless, and the one that was spotless was stained in the blood of the sins of the rebellious. Prisoners are released from dungeons that they themselves have created. The blind are given their sight back, and the author of life bows his head in submission to the will of his Father in heaven. O oh my Lord, my God, my Savior, 
thank you for having let me receive you. I humble myself before you. I confess that I am any and every one of those that sought to destroy you, but you love my soul with an unfailing commitment, and I will praise you every day of my life, no matter what the circumstances. The battle must first be fought in the human heart and I know now that we only win if we surrender our hearts completely to you, and the sacrifice that you made to redeem us. Now your words ring out like pure unadulterated truth. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Forgive me Lord for ever harboring anger or unforgiveness in my heart, for you love me with an unfailing commitment even though I was your enemy. Father, dear Father, thank you. Jesus, bless you. You have purchased my soul and my freedom through your agony on the cross. Let me show others the same love you have shown me. Your child in Christ. And put your name in there, your child in Christ, and and whatever your name is. If and it may not, it may or it may not apply to you. But I had a moment where I realized I was part of a group that was no different than the very people that were spitting on on Jesus, that were hurling their insults and their accusations. How could I be any different if I had to be converted? You know what I'm saying? Like if I had to be redeemed, that means I'm no different than the ones that were right there when it was happening. And it became so real for me that I wept and wept. And I'm like, I don't ever want to be like that. So I like this scene from The Chosen because Mary says, you know, I was one way and then I was something completely different. And what happened in between was him. That's why the cross is in the middle of those two other crosses. Jesus, the cross that Jesus went on, was on. The cross that Jesus was on was meant for a guy named Bar Abbas. Bar means son of. Abbas means the father. Can you imagine that there was a cross that weekend? They're celebrating Passover. And Jesus is our Passover sacrifice. The lamb, the spotless lamb, like leaving Egypt. And that the very name of the guy meant son of the father, Bar Abbas. And he was set free and Jesus took the cross. That means that you're Barabbas, I'm Barabbas, whoever gets saved is Barabbas, son of the Father, because when Jesus takes a cross for you, and it's personal, and you know it, he becomes your Savior, and he took the cross for you, and he's actually Barabba, he's actually the son of the Father in heaven, do you know how crazy that is? <laughs> do you understand the level of insanity, what I just told you actually is? That's beyond the brain. The cross was meant for a guy named son of the Father. And he got let go, and Jesus took the cross from him. Don't you see? He was in between the two other guys. It says they all lay bound together in insurrection. It's a representation of you. You're bound with your good and the evil you, the twin, the twin you, the Johnny good and the Johnny bad, bound together. They lay bound together. They had committed insurrection. Do you understand how profound this is? I mean, just what I just told you is a trillion, impos- beyond a trillion odds, it's not possible that the very weekend of the death of the Messiah the, um, on Passover, the guy that was meant for the cross, his name was Barabbas, son of the father. It's not possible. So now, as I stated, or as the, the man that read that letter that I wrote in 2005, probably. So that's from 2005. Um, I had to let go of some, you know, anger because some bad stuff was happening to me at the time I'd gotten, I'd been converted since 2002. And by 2005, and the supernatural gifts I was exhibiting, man, oh man, I got to see the world rear its ugly head at me. And I had to let go of some, you know, just some unforgiveness that was in my heart, which is what I'm asking all y'all to do. (laughs) I want y'all to, I want you to let go of any unforgiveness. Like right now, I deal with a lot of channels that they're dedicated to hating John Lee Clack, but they say they're Christians. The Bible says there's no way you could do a hate somebody channel and call yourself a Christian. That's called delusional. And so anyway, that's been going on for some time. But anyway, so last night I had a a moment while I was out here doing a video and I just picked up my phone and I'm going to play you what happened. And then I want you to pray with me because... My true heart actually came out at this moment, and I and I meant what I said. So let's watch this. Okay, so it says a feeling about Karen, and and I want to be very clear about this. It was like in my spirit, and it was like a heaviness, like something may have happened to Karen Sullivan or 
maybe even someone in the family. I don't. I, it's not like the Lord said, "Hey, Jonathan, this happened to Karen or something." I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I had a spiritual moment where I was like, "Wow, something bad happened." I think I just I don't know. So I want to pray first of all. Pray first, Heavenly Father God. The Bible says, you know, bless those that curse you. You know, do do good to those that spitefully use you. That's on the mantra of a Christian. All of us, you, if you're watching this, you can't harbor hate and unforgiveness in your heart. You can't. You you have to, Christ is our leader. So anyway, so I've had a lot of, you know, getting beat up and publicly maligned, very seriously maligned. And I've just, I've let it all go. And last night, this happened, and I just strange moment i'm just getting ready to do a video out here in my little video strange moment i'm just getting ready to do a video out here in my little video area and i'm um, just i feel like the lord's saying like maybe karen sullivan uh, has passed or something um god have mercy on karen sullivan and kathy uh her sister God have mercy on them. Anyway, I wish I could help them. Amen. So, as I as I saw this, and just and this is just on a personal level because I've had a lot of past uh, things that have happened through a, a lot of people out there, but my true heart is right there. That's Jonathan Cleck's true heart. I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody, nobody. So just if you would pray with me, just in the name of Yeshua, Father, I pray that, you know, nothing did happen and something did happen. Just then I'm praying, God, have mercy. That's it. That's God, be merciful. I know you require mercy, not sacrifice. Amen. Anyway, all right now. So now I want to move on and I want to just leave that out there and I want to show you John, 1 John 5.18. Now, y'all ready to move on to some really crazy, exciting, mind-blowing stuff? Let's do it. Okay, here we go. So one thing I would like to be able to do right now is to give you an example. So you so you get a mental image. Let me, like, we're in a physics class or something. Okay, so let me just show you this right here. Here's a dimension going up. That's a dimension going, think of going into heaven, and here's a dimension going down. And then the bar in between, that's where we are now. I'm just going to slide over and I'm going to say, okay, so now here is an image of the earth. And then you see like an energy coming from above and then one going down. I want, I want to share with you just the way the Lord taught it to me. The Bible says if your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. Okay, now let's just look over here. So, if your eye be single, then right here is the dimension from heaven. Where are the stars? Again, that's why Lucifer said, I will arise above the stars of hell. Because, see, we're in a host body walking around on the earth. One eye goes up, one eye goes down. The one eye that goes up goes to a star, and the eye that goes down goes to the pit to a worm. Uh, and I showed you all that in Job 25 and Joel 2 as well. Uh, several other scriptures. But so... If you're walking around on this thing, you have one eye that the essence goes to the pit to a worm, goes down. And so if you die, right, and you're in this system right here, and you die, and you don't get converted, well, when your host body dies, it see, there's a there's a energy inside of you. And if you haven't been converted, and your eyes haven't been made single, and you haven't been made, made whole, but you got two different things going, well, the one that owns that host body system is Satan. That's why he told Jesus, look, if you'll just bow down and worship me, I'll give it all to you. It's all mine to give. So whatever you want while you're here, you can have it. He said, no, you'll serve the Lord and the Lord God and serve him only. And so, see, so there's the system right here. One eye that goes up, one eye that goes down. It's a, okay, so there's the system. Now, if you don't get converted, you go down. Your essence go down. But if you get converted... Then, I'm going to show you, then you become one in Christ. Now watch. I'm going to take this magnet, and I'm going to go like this. And 
I, it has up there, so I have one eye that's up right there, and then you see down right there, and so down, black. So one eye up, one eye down. So now I go like this, and man, you, can y'all see that force in between them? So there's a middle wall of partition within us. One energy is coming to the pit. One energy goes to the stars. We are the stars. That's what the Bible says. The Lord's let me prove it. Even Taylor Swift is playing. Devils roll the dice. Angels roll their eyes. 241 on the dice means of another race, angels. And then uh, 336 means a taking of life, destroying. Because, see, the demons that get the angels caught in the host body, yours, you have a line going to the pit to a worm. So, see, Satan's just waiting for you to die. Because if you die like that, boom, you go straight to the pit and you become food for a locust. You get assimilated into their collective. Now watch this. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to have up right here. So that's up right here. And then I'm going to show you down right here. So look, they won't go together. They are in opposition because they go to different places. But when you make your confession to God and you say, I'm sorry, Father, forgive me. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. I deserve my punishment. So then you get converted. Watch. Now watch this. So then you get turned. And now watch. Ready? And the two snap together. Do you see how tight snap together this is? So then you have... Then you have two eyes that are up. Your eyes have become single. So, okay, another way to look at it is, you know, uh, in the folded, if your eye be single, there's one up, one down. And the, the word said, uh, for, for if your eye be single, your whole body's full of, full of light. It says folded together. Ready? So if you go like this, ready? It folds together and both eyes are up. That energy inside of you. So when your host body dies, your essence, your spark of holiness returns. Okay, but if it doesn't get converted and you die, right here, what's going on right here, this dimension down here gets you. Your essence goes, it has to. That's the, the mechanics of it. Now, let me just give you an example with my this pair of glasses. So, right here on each eye, I have a string. So, I have one that goes, so if I put these on, sorry, this may be a little bit, you know what, hang on one sec. So ready? So watch. So if this one goes down to the pit, and then this one goes to heaven, and those are our signals, one's an angel signal, one's a demon signal. Okay, but if I get converted, the one that goes down to the pit, it gets cut. The word in the Bible is severed, cut. It's uh, You are set apart. So the word set apart is severed. Let me show you real quick. Oh, sorry guys, hang on. If you go to Isaiah 59, and I, I can, by the way, you can find this all through the Bible. It's easy to find, just, but you can find this in all kinds of scriptures. But your iniquities have separated you between between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Because now look what the word separated is. Ready? So I'm going to take this line and go down to the word separated. See, I'm going down here. Now I'm going to enlarge them to divide asunder, to separate self, to sever. Okay, so that we so we got severed from the Lord, but also when you get converted, it severs the connection to the pit. It says it. And now watch this. You ready? Now how many of y'all out there have been converted? You know you're converted. You can see the Vatican's a snake. You know the larger largest altar in the world's a dead sheep. I'm showing you pictures. Why would people come up and give me pictures of dead sheep on my face? Hey Johnny, I drew a picture. What? Because they serve this other race of beings that, that owns them. Do they even know they do it? No. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They're just servants of Satan, unwittingly even know it. Second Timothy 2, read the whole thing. So anyway, so when you get converted and the two become one, like this little magnet thing that I showed you. Let's do it one more time. 
So you can't go together. There's a middle wall of partition. It's an energy. It's a chasm. It's just this chasm of energy and you can't get through it. But watch when you turn it upside down, the two go together. Both eyes are up. Your eyes have become single and your whole body's full of light. Just like I colored the magnets, light and light on both, both light. Okay. Now, so how many of you guys, since you've been, you know, you've been converted, but you've still done things that you feel bad about. Like, you know, some people think, oh, I smoked pot. That's it. I threw away my salvation. I'm like, what? First of all, the Bible says all things are permissible. Not all things are expedient. So you, on your sanctification with God, you learn to discern what is acceptable and what is not acceptable between you and the Lord God. A lot of people think, oh, I started drinking for a while. That's it. I destroyed my salvation. I'm like, that's not the way it works. When you get converted and you have been completely converted, you have been spiritually reborn. You no longer have this spirit. So you don't have a line going to the pit anymore. There's no line going down there. So Satan cannot take over you. You've been converted. You have a spiritual rebirth. So you have a spirit that's unified. Hang on one sec. So now you have the Holy Spirit. Before you had a superhuman angel, demon. So he had a way of, you know, controlling your life. But when you've been reborn, it doesn't mean you'll never sin again. But you cannot sin. The Bible says you cannot sin and the evil one cannot touch you. Do you know why you cannot sin? Look, because you've been converted and the two have become one and there's no longer an attachment to the dimension of the worm that was feeding off you. Let me show you the Bible. A lot of people, oh, don't wait. Share the way the Lord does things in, in my world. Here you go. One sec. Here you go. First John 5.18. Uh, go to Esword. Okay, here we go. First John 5.18. So I feel like sometimes when I put these headphones on, I start yelling because I, I can't hear as well. Here we go. 5.18. We know that whosoever is born of God. Ready? Look at the word born. To procreate properly of the Father. Say it out loud. Out loud. But by extension of the mother but figuratively to regenerate, to bear, to beget, to bring forth, to be delivered. Okay, ready? To be delivered of gender. Look at the word gender. Gender. Now watch this. We know that whoever is born of God sinneth not. Ready? Sinneth. To miss the mark and to not share in the prize. Okay, watch this. That is figuratively to err, especially morally to sin. Ready? Let me show the root of it. To get as a section or a allotment, a division or a share, be half. Now, right now, to supplement, to get as in a cannot sin. It says, whoever is born of God sinneth not. See all the words I just showed you? To get as a section, an allotment, a division, a share. Yeah. Where did you get your sin from before? From the pit. How? You were attached to a locust from the pit that had control over half your consciousness. Because we're all Cain and Abel, every one of us. So that was holding on to you. But when you get converted, there's no longer a record against you. He can't keep a record. You ready? You ready? You want to be at peace? You want to let it all go? Quit trying to be, oh, I can do this. You can't do it. No one can do it. That's the whole point. But you've been born of God. So watch this. Ready? Ready? You've been born of whoever's been born of God sinneth not. The word sinneth means to get as a section or allotment, a division or a share, be half. See it? But he is, but he that is begotten of God, look at the word begotten, to procreate, that he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, look at the word keepeth, to
to guard to keep from loss or injury by keeping an eye upon keepeth himself that the wicked one toucheth him not. Look at that, ready? Freak out. Properly to attach oneself to. See, because Satan can no longer attach himself to you. The only way is if you openly made a display of Christ. Let's say you just, look at David. Did David cheat on it? David was married to what? He either had 700 wives and 300 concubines, or 300 wives and 700 concubines. A thousand girls to choose from. Gee, just whatever, that sounds awful. <laughs> so David cheats on with on all his wives with Bathsheba. Then he murders Uriah. And then he tries to cover it up. God forgave David, but he had one stormy end of his life, and he came with it. But see, the evil one can't get you if you're converted. I mean, well, let me let me rephrase that. You would have to make an open display, publicly, openly displaying, just renouncing it all and living a life that was just like impossible. It, it, it would be very hard to do. And here's the thing. If you were truly converted, you would never want to do it anyway. Because once you're converted, you don't want to use your conversion and don't want to use your freedom as a cloak for doing your sin. You don't. You're like, I don't want to do that anymore. And well, I'm free. I, I'm not under the law anymore. Yeah, I know. Okay. Everything's, everything is permissible, but not everything is expedient. Everything is permissible. Some people are like, oh, I smoked pot. I ruined my salvation. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? It's not the way it works. A spiritual regeneration means there's a new spirit in you. The demon that was attached to the pit, out. Get out. That's it. You've been made one in Christ. Now you walk it around. You walk it out until the, the day that you get called home. Now watch this. And the evil one and the wicked one toucheth him not. Look at the word. Look at it. Toucheth. Properly to attach oneself to. And then here, look at, look at the root of the word. Properly to fasten to. That is specifically... To set on fire. So if you find yourself set on fire for hookers and partying and lying and cheating, well then something's wrong. But if you've been converted, <laughs> you're converted. It says it right there. I want you to be at peace. I want you to have the peace that I have. But the Lord make sure that when he shows me something, he gives me the scriptures to back it up. There it is. Now you live out the rest of your life on faith. And your eyes have been made single on a blepsis, so you can wisely image of the virgin of dead sheep. Well, now you know. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. The word touch means to lie with a woman. The whole thing is about male and female energy in opposition to each other, within a host body system. That's what this is all about. And and the pit, twin female energy, is what started that. That's where the pit is. The twin female energy is what gives the host body system its start as a female form of procreation, and it's able to self-fertilize, then transgender, then be fruitful and multiply. That's the natural body that comes first. That's the inverted one. And then the angels come into it, their their essence comes into it, and there's an angel, and that body is already attached to the pit. Everybody that comes up is attached to the pit. Everyone that's born is attached to the pit. Angel comes in, it's already attached to the pit. So you've got to get converted where both eyes are up. You can see on a blepsis, on a hinosco, on a kianosis, on a crino, it's always on a up. And then what's the curse in Revelation? Down. So then when you watch this, let's go to Revelation. And then I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna put this video up right now and then I'm gonna do another video. But here we go, watch this. Revelation and then let's let's just read all three uh all three verses here. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. 
Okay, isn't it? Okay, think about this. And of the lamp. Okay, what's the image of the virgin when you turn it upside down? What does the virgin become when you turn it upside down? Let's just do it all right now, real quick. Okay, so we'll go to the folder right here. So here it is. Ready? So, you see the dead sheep right here? There's the sheep's eye, eye, nostril, line of the lip, tongue sticking out. There's the wool around, you know, there's sheep there, do Ears. Okay, so there's the sheep. Okay, to make your eye be single up, you fold, you have a line right here. You just fold it up that way, and your eyes become single. You get it? Oh, geez, sorry about that. Okay, so there's the image. Now, see right here? Down. So what's that? Let's go back to the Bible. There shall be no more curse. There shall be no more curse. Look at it. Kata. Down. There shall be no more preposition down in place or time down there shall be no more curse kata anathema okay let's look at the word anathema 331 the anathema part it says excommunicated thing or person you were a curse because you were cast down so do you understand you had a down in you you were a curse you are excommunicated from where? Heaven. So you come in, you get a body, and your body's your prison suit, and you're walking around your whole life not even knowing that you're in a prison suit or that you're here as punishment. Your life, your life and your host body is you're in it because you sinned against God. You committed the original sin. You think God's going to throw you in the eternal abyss because you didn't do anything? <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> so say the angel comes in, boom, into the host body, those bodies already wired with the demon. You're in. But now you walk around your whole life. You got one good eye, one guy that goes to the bit. And you got to turn back to God up because you came down. Get it? You came down. You got to turn. Forgive me, Father. I sinned against you and against heaven. Prodigal son, he left. He left home. We left heaven. Came into the system. Wasted his substance. Doesn't see money. His substance, eternal life on riotous living and prostitutes and then he found that he was he was destitute and he said i'll go back to my father at least i'll be able to eat i'll ask him to hire me as a servant and his dad goes and runs and meets him puts a ring on his finger says you're my son you were lost and now you're found now you're found you understand i do okay i'm gonna make this short uh, I don't want to overdo this. I just want you guys to get this part right now. I'm going to come back with more scripture and stuff. Okay. on the, I'm going to load this up right now and then I'll come right back. Okay. I love you guys. Pray for the, pray for Karen and Kathy and Chuck and Jim, please. Cause I felt this heaviness. And I, like I said, I'm just pray for them. All right. Peace and grace guys.